In this screencast, we are just going to talk about ionic bonds uh, and their characteristics and how they form compounds. All right, in an ionic bond, you have um, two ions. You always have um, a positive ion, so like for instance, barium is plus two, and you will have a negative ion, so chlorine is minus one. And what is happening is you have an attraction between um, this atom that has uh, lost two electrons and this atom which has gained an electron and their opposite charges act like a magnet and they attract each other um, by the oppositeness of their charge. So in an ionic compound it's composed of a positive and a negative ion that's combined so that the numbers of positive and negative charges are equal. So in our example the barium and the chlorine we would have Ba and two CLs in order to make it neutral. We have positive two and um, minus one and in order to have an overall charge of zero we need to have um, two of this negative one um, chlorine. So most ionic compounds are crystalline solids. Uh, they, the crystal will take on a three-dimensional shape um, and the chemical formula of the ionic compound represents molecules um, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not molecules, but rather formula units. That's the difference. In a, a molecule is a covalent compound, and a formula unit is an ionic compound. Now, you will see and hear people rep, um, misrepresent and miscall them, and they'll say that this is a BACL2 molecule. Um, for the most part, that's, that's okay, but if you want to be really picky, um, a compound that is ionic should be recognized as a formula unit. This graphic shows the difference between ionic and a covalent bonding. In, um, in an ionic compound, we have a positive and a negative um, atom, and the electrons get transferred from one of them to another one. Um, so this one, would, if we were transferring the electrons, this one would be positive and this one would be negative. Uh, and here in covalent bonding, the electrons are shared between the two, and nobody gets them in between them. They, they're e evenly shared. Okay, so the purpose of gaining and losing electrons is um, a thing called the octet rule, and the octet rule says that all of the atoms and elements are trying to achieve eight electrons in their outer shell, and um, we said this is the octet rule, and this is for stability. So some elements will gain and lose stability. Some elements will gain and lose and some will share. So we're looking at ionic compounds and what happens is these will gain and lose electrons causing um, an overall charge. So in sodium we have one electron and in chlorine we have seven and they're each trying to achieve eight. So the sodium it is much easier for it to lose its one electron and in the chlorine's case it's much easier to gain one electron in order to achieve eight. Um, just think of it as like, you know, watching things or gaining and losing things or money even. Um, it's easier to lose one thing than it is to gain seven in the sodium's case. And for chlorine, it's easier to gain one than it is to lose all seven. So, um, sodium atom has, I'm sorry, this is not two. This should be one valence electron. And the chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. Those are the electrons in the outer shell. And the atom of sodium and other alkali metals will lose an electron to form a cation. Remember, cations are positive. And chlorine and the other halogens will gain electrons and form an anion. Okay, so you can see in this um, sodium chloride structure here that you have um, many positively charged sodiums and many uh, negatively charged chlorines, and they're all combined. And each um, attraction here each one of these is an ionic bond. And what happens is that these ionic bonds will arrange themselves so that they are uh, lining up so that there's positives and negatives and they're, they're forming this particular crystal structure in order to minimize um, the like, um, you know, having um, two positives side by side or having two negatives side by side. So that's why they're, they're lining up so that they can exist with the same positives or negatives and they're, they're not repelled or attracted. Over here you have, um, you have your negative chlorine ion and you have your positive um, cesium ion and this forms a different type of crystal structure. So each one of these overall pictures are a different shape slightly. They appear to be in, you know, just a regular cube, but they have a different name. 
the reason that the ionic compounds um, form the shape, the crystal lattice that they do, is they are trying to um, play on the uh, oppositely charged ions and keep the attractive parts like the positives and the negatives, um, they want to stick together. And they're trying to uh, to deal with the repulsive. So like if you have two negatives, they're not gonna wanna hang out beside each other or two positives are not gonna wanna hang out beside each other. So a crystal structure arranges your um, positives and negatives in a pattern so that they are all equally um, attracted and repelled. Um, so you have different um, factors that, that play into um, the forming of these compounds and so different substances will have different distances between each other and they will have a slightly different pattern like we saw in the NaCl and the CSCl that was in the previous screen.